welcome to our Nutrition Quick Hits presentation. This presentation was developed by myself, Alyssa Steinberg. I'm a registered dietitian. Rebecca Noseworthy, also a registered dietitian, and Dr. John Stephen Piper. With regards to disclosures, we do have, um, over the last three years, accumulated some disclosures on behalf of Dr. John Stephen Piper, and please review on this slide as well as the next slide. We will, be, um, we will be hoping to meet the following objectives by the end of this module. So the first objective is to describe the value of lifestyle modification, including weight loss, diet, nutrition, etc., in the management of patients with diabetes. And we're also hoping to counsel patients on the role of nutrition and exercise in prevention and management of overweight and obesity, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. Nutrition quick hits um, is the topic of our presentation because we know that food behaviors play a key role in the management of type 1 and type 2 diabetes. However, um, both time and resources make it difficult for physicians to actually incorporate nutrition counseling as a part of their care. So the purpose of this presentation is to provide you with some really quick and easy nutrition recommendations you can use in your practice as a physician for your patients. This is a summary of our top 10 nutrition recommendations or nutrition quick hits that you can start utilizing in your future practice as a physician. So the first nutrition quick hit is the patient knows best. This quote really speaks to what, um, what this recommendation um, entails. People are the undisputed experts on themselves. No one has been with them longer or knows them better than they do themselves. In motivational interviewing, the helper is a companion who typically does less than half of the talking. So what that means is, is using motivational interviewing um, really allows us to um, help the patients find their internal motivation. Um, it's important to recognize that the wisdom is in the room. So most patients usually um, are able to present with a nutrition goal or a nutrition area of challenge that they actually want to work on or that they know is an area that needs to be worked on. So in order to really implement this whole patient knows best philosophy, there's a few things you can do. One is let the patient do the thinking, the talking, and the planning. Use that elicit, provide, elicit strategy to evoke patient's own um, goals, um, commitments, and motivation. And try to suspend the expert didactic um, prescriptive authority role um, and invite active participation with the patients. Practice reflective listening throughout uh, the patient's visit and be attuned to that change talk. To expand further on the patient knows best, Diabetes Canada is really um, encouraging um, physicians to help patients choose a dietary pattern that best fits with their values, their preferences, and their treatment goals. And this really, um, you know, by really allowing the patient um, to, or to by helping the patient navigate which dietary pattern is best for them, the idea is um, adherence to these nutrition goals um, would be optimized. So some of the possible dietary patterns to advise patients include the Medit Mediterranean dietary pattern, vegetarian, the dietary approach to stop hypertension and low sodium, the portfolio, and the Nordic dietary patterns. Um, there's a really big paradigm shift on focusing um, from focusing on single nutrients to more about dietary patterns. The next nutrition quick hit or nutrition recommendation that you can use in your practice is just to really help patients um, utilize this rule of three. So it's all about consistency within their meal, their menu and food behaviors. So the idea behind this is um, with prolonged periods without eating, it could really lead to dysregulated um, or a hunger, uh, dysregulation of hunger and fullness cues, um, overeating, and even heightened cravings um, and altered moods. So the real emphasis is consistency in spacing and regularity of carbohydrate intake throughout the day. Um, and this could really help to control blood glucose and weight management. 
So how to implement this rule of three? So um, the first thing is to encourage patients to adopt a normalized eating schedule by following the rule of three. So this would include three meals, two to three snacks throughout the day, and spacing your meals and snacks by two to three hours, starting early in the morning and finishing early at night. It's very common to see a lot of meal skippers um, and more prolonged periods without eating. So addressing that in your, in your care can really actually um, lead to improved weight management and glycemic improvements um, outcomes. So a, a case where this um, nutrition recommendation might apply would be a patient who's not eating breakfast, um, but recognizes it may contribute to overeating later in the evening. So if they've missed a full meal, they come home from work um, starving and tend to overeat um, in a very kind of more sedentary, vulnerable time. The next nutrition quick hit is to really think about empowering the chef at home. So a family-centered approach in your care um, really does ensure that any dietary changes that, that you're recommending um, are made at home um, that are more inclusive of all family members. And studies have shown that when the entire family buys into this change or adopting healthy food behaviors, patients are more likely to make these positive changes and sustain them. So in order to implement this recommendation, first and foremost, as a physician, identify who the chef is at home and who does the grocery shopping at home. And once you've identified the chef, try to make sure that they're included in your plan. So it may not be the patient you're working with, it may be his or her wife or spouse, um, or, or even child or, or, or care provider. So make sure they're included in the plan. So try to invite them to, to join all of the visits, or perhaps just provide a handout to the patient that summarizes the goal that can then be communicated to the chef at home. And lastly, um, encourage, praise, and support that chef at every meal. Um, so really try to really, um, really emphasize how helpful they are in the management of your patient. The next nutrition quick hit is to know your cuisine. One in five Canadians are foreign born, and over 250 ethnic origins were reported by Statistics Canada. And understanding these ethnic backgrounds in relation to food can actually strengthen your relationship with your patients. So utilizing your cultural competencies and tailoring your nutrition recommendations will likely optimize behavior change in between visits. So how to actually implement this recommendation? Shift away from that one size fits all approach and learn more about your patient's cultural dishes, their cooking methods, their staple food products in their home, and try to offer some healthier alternatives. This chart here really exemplifies um, different cuisines and what might be um, an original, um, traditional uh, way of making the food, and it also provides some healthier substitutions. So for example, for some uh, cuisines that include um, um, soy sauce, you can always recommend to ensure it's a lower sodium soy sauce. Or some cuisines that include non-bread, you could encourage these uh, patients to use roti, which, um, which does include a whole wheat flour. So this chart is something you can review as examples of how to um, help your patients make healthier alternatives within their current cuisine. And to expand further the Canadian Transcultural Diabetes Nutrition Algorithm for prediabetes and type 2 diabetes does emphasize at the beginning of the algorithm to really identify um, their ethnic um, origin. The next nutrition quick hit involves fiber boosting your biggest meal of the day. Fiber has been shown to improve postprandial glycemic control by slowing down gastric emptying and delaying glucose absorption in the small intestine. The DRIs have actually recommended a certain amount of fiber per day. However, many Canadians are only getting half of the amount of fiber they need. So how to implement this nutrition recommendation? So first and foremost, identify when your patients have the biggest appetite of the day, which would correspond likely to their biggest meal of the day. And um, try to identify um, ways that you can boost fiber in that meal by offering patients a menu of options. So let, let them select which one um, applies to them. So an example could be, try to make half your plate vegetables or two cups of vegetables within that meal. 
And if your patient's not as interested in vegetables and more inclined to want fruit, suggest making half your plate fruit or two cups or two servings of fruit on that meal. Another option could be adding um, additional legumes to that meal. So three quarters of a cup of legumes within that meal can add a significant amount of fiber to, your, to, that, to that meal that they've chosen. The sixth nutrition quick hit is to make treat foods and beverages a scheduled event. Our food environment can really influence our food choices and even lead to those impulse purchases. And I define treat meals and snacks as foods or beverages with an excess of fat, sugar, or even a combination of both. Um, and as a result, these foods tend to have little or even no uh, additional vitamins or minerals. So in terms of treat meals and snacks or beverages, they should be consumed in moderation. And in order to do so, they, ideally they should become a scheduled event. So encourage your clients to try to limit treat meals and snacks to a certain amount of times per week. For example, treat meals could be limited to one time per week and treat snacks could be limited to two times per week. And in order to uh, help your patients um, implement this goal, you could actually give them a little chart that helps them identify which days they would want to have their treat meal or their treat snacks, or even just select um, when they actually did have them to see pictorially how often they're actually consuming some of these treat foods or beverages. The next nutrition quick hit is to recommend um, a kitchen makeover. So making healthy foods more convenient. So the idea behind this is our kitchen architecture can really influence what kind of foods we choose to eat. And people tend to gravitate towards those more convenient and quickly accessed foods. So for example, we're more inclined to have crackers or chips because they're ready to go um, instead of actually having vegetable sticks that require chopping and prepping. We're most vulnerable um, in the kitchen for more of these kind of convenient foods after a long day of work and coming home hungrier and really kind of wanting to snack on something. Um, we also are more vulnerable to more convenient foods later in the evening after dinner meals when we find ourselves roaming back into the kitchen or even on the weekend days when we're home all day and we tend to kind of graze throughout the day. So, by making healthier foods more convenient, we're more likely to actually make healthier food choices. So how to do this? So the first step is to wash and cut up all of your vegetables and fruits before actually putting them into your fridge. Um, and by doing so, um, you um, are able to chop everything up, put them in Ziploc bags, put them in containers, so they are convenient and ready to go instead of storing them in the bags that they come in at the grocery store um, and require an extra step before eating them. Um, the next thing too is to try to make vegetables and fruits more visible in your fridge. So most vegetables and fruits are stored in those deep drawers on the lower level. Um, and I would encourage you to suggest making them more visible at eye level and putting them on a shelf where we can easily see them and grab them and, and more likely consume them. And the last thing um, to do to really make this possible is just to keep it simple. So a kitchen makeover sounds a bit overwhelming, but what I'm recommending is just once a week, try to actually prepare more vegetables and fruits in a more convenient way. Um, and once they're done for the week, um, then they're available for you throughout the rest of that week. And then you can kind of reset the next week. The next nutrition quick hit is to provide your patients with essential recipe swaps. So there is a plethora of recipes available, whether it's through cookbooks or online websites or blogs or social media. And when patients are making healthy changes to their diet, they often actually request a ton of recipe suggestions to help them follow through with their goals. Um, however, rather than um, inventing or finding or identifying um, the best recipes for your patients, try to encourage just basic ingredient swaps or even add-ons um, to transform those recipes into a healthier version. So this chart um, here gives you a few examples of how to do so. 
If the recipe calls for white flour or white rice or pasta, um, I would encourage you to, inf um, to, to recommend switching to more of a whole wheat or a whole grain version. For dairy products, instead of using the higher fat dairy products, you can always suggest using the lower fat dairy products. And for protein sources, whether they're animal or plant-based, um, try to ensure they're lean, um, and even more of the plant-based ones, try to get them to actually be, be more open to adding tofu to a recipe or subbing in something a little bit less healthy for a plant-based animal protein. And vegetables and fruits. So in any recipe, I would encourage you to recommend always adding more. So if a recipe calls for one cup of broccoli, I would encourage adding two or three, or adding broccoli and zucchini to that recipe just to get more volume and more vegetables in that recipe. The next nutrition quick hit is to recommend to your patients to balance their plates. Following the plate method portion guide is strongly encouraged. In fact, the 2019 Canada's Food Guide actually is a plate method portion guide. And this suggests that half your plate is vegetables and or fruits, a quarter of your plate is starch, and the other quarter is a protein. However, it is particularly challenging to follow this plate, particularly related to that starch portion only being a quarter of your plate. If we go to restaurants, we don't often see a quarter of our plate of pasta or rice. We often see a full plate of pasta or rice. So to be able to move from that full plate to a quarter plate can be difficult for many. However, there are some solutions to this challenge. So first is try mixing your starch portions with vegetables to offer a larger portion. And if you don't like vegetables, I do recommend suggesting to include fruit on your plate for half your plate as opposed to adding more protein or more starch to your meal. You can also use this volumetrics concept. So the, the idea is to still have a lot of food, a nice big plate of food, um, but the volume of it is um, often um, enriched with lots of vegetables and even some lean proteins as opposed to the starch portion. So it's really adding more food uh, with more nutrition as opposed to just one food group like the starch. So in order to implement this um, concept of balancing your plate, um, I would suggest encouraging your patients um, to become more creative and open-minded to some of the recipes in their kitchen. And this would mean trying to make vegetables a little bit more interesting and tasty. So for example, mix your regular pasta with a zucchini pasta or zucchini noodles or a spaghetti squash. Or even mixed mashed potatoes with mashed cauliflower or even sweet potato. Or try to suggest mixing rice with cauliflower rice. So instead of having a quarter cup of the rice, you might actually be having a larger portion, but most of that's coming from vegetables. So some recipes you can suggest um, that patients can try um, are nicely displayed here. So we have zucchini noodles, we have the spaghetti squash, we have cauliflower rice, and we have cauliflower mashed potato. You can also recommend using eggplant lasagna, um, or even making chips out of kale, or pizza out of a broccoli pizza crust. The last nutrition quick hit is to offer your patients some evening snack solutions. Snacking in the evening is very common and has become a habit for many, which actually makes it more difficult to break. Um, and foods that are consumed during these hours are not likely essential nutrients. They're likely in excess of, of our actual dietary needs by that time of the day. And furthermore, the preferred foods during these hours are most often the treat foods or packaged foods, which are higher in fats, sugar, and or salt. So to implement this recommendation, rather than focusing on exactly what to eat, it almost is actually easier to limit the amount of food consumed. So try suggesting to limit the snack portion to 150 calories. Um, and this does not include calories from non-starchy vegetables. So in order to do this, um, advise patients to use a nutrition facts label when they're looking at their snack foods to measure how much they should have within 150 calories and suggest portioning their snack into a bowl rather than eating directly out of the package. 
And make sure those vegetables and fruits are readily available because 150 calories may be enough to satisfy you initially, but not fully. So relying on more vegetables and fruit to fully satisfy you um, is essential in those moments. By now, we hope that you should be able to describe the value of lifestyle modifications, including weight loss, diet, nutrition, etc., in the management of patients with diabetes, and counsel patients of the role of nutrition and exercise in prevention and management of overweight and obesity, diabetes, and dyslipidemia. Here we have our references for review. Thank you, and I hope you enjoyed this presentation.